Today, I wanted to cover a more advanced topic within Weak Auras. We'll be talking about boss spells and timings, creating ways to track most boss abilities, and creating some warnings ahead of when the spell will actually occur. Getting alerted to a frontal early on can buy you extra time to move before it's too late. As a warning, this is going to be a slightly more advanced guide and will be building on existing topics that I've already covered in my Weak Auras basic videos. If you don't want to make your own weak auras from scratch, I would suggest going over to wago.io and searching for the boss spell ability name to see if someone else has already made one that you can use out of the box. For tracking boss spells within weak auras, there's two main ways to approach it. The first one is reactive, or alerting you after the spell has already started its cast. The second is proactive, alerting me before the spell has already started. The first type. Reactive is native to weak auras, while the proactive type does require that you install a boss mod add-on of some kind. Both types of spell tracking are pretty straightforward, and let's go ahead and jump in and get started. Let's first talk about reactive auras. These are auras that appear at the same time that the boss begins casting an ability. They require no external add-ons and are the simplest to configure. Let's start by making a simple aura. Go ahead and open up the weak aura panel with slash wa in the chat window. From here, we'll select New Aura up at the top, followed by Progress Bar on the right-hand side. This will prompt you to enter a name on the left. You'll want to name your aura after the boss ability that we're going to be tracking, which I'll show you how to find shortly. For now, let's just call this Gnarl Root Frontal. Don't worry about how this bar looks yet, as you can see here in the center of my screen. We'll fix that later. Let's first navigate over to the Trigger tab at the top right. By default, you'll only have one trigger present, named Trigger1 Aura. In order to track if a boss is actively casting an ability, we'll change the type dropdown to player slash unit info. A new field will appear on the right. Change its value to cast. Then, be sure to change the unit dropdown that we're looking at to be specific unit. This will create a new text field, into which we're going to type the words boss, one, with no space, all lowercase, and hit OK. Then, we'll want to tell the aura which spell we're interested in tracking. We can do this by adding the name of the spell, or the exact spell ID. Generally, it's healthier to use the exact spell ID because it's more accurate and avoids issues with typos or punctuation. Check the box for exact spell IDs. If you don't know the name of the ability, you can open up your dungeon journal with Shift J, which is behind my window now. And then we'll go to Raids. We'll go to the correct expansion. We'll go to the exact raid. We'll click on the boss, and then we can look at their ability list here on the right to find whichever spell we're interested in tracking. You can also search the internet for boss name plus guide, and you'll likely find the same information there as well. In our case, for tracking the Gnarl Root Frontal, we're looking for the spell named Shadow Flame Cleave. Now that we've identified the name of the spell, we can head over to our web browser and type in wowhead boss name spell name. So I can go ahead and do that here. Cleave. All right, cool. It's right here. You always want to make sure that you're looking at the right ability here. So it, these two tooltips should match up with each other. But after you confirm that you're looking at the right ability, look at the URL up at the top of the browser. You'll notice that there's a portion that says spell equals and then a bunch of numbers. That is your spell ID. So we'll go ahead and copy this out and we'll come back to weak auras and we'll enter that exact spell ID here and click OK. And you'll see that it updates to say Shadow Flame Cleave. The icon here to the left of it should also match the one that's present in the dungeon journal just to help confirm that you're looking at the correct one. I'd also recommend that you go to the Load tab in the top right and make a few quick adjustments. Since you'll only want to use this aura while we're fighting a boss, we're going to check the In Combat option so that it turns green. This says, hey, only load if we are in combat. Let's then scroll down to the Location section, which is down here, and we'll check the box for Encounter IDs. If you hover over the text box that appears, you'll notice a massive tooltip on your screen that contains all of the currently relevant raids 
that are currently active. There is a very high chance that your tooltip when you watch this video will look different than what mine shows here because we have three active raids at the same time. You'll likely only have one. This will be much smaller. We'll look for the name of the boss that we want to fight. So Gnarl Root is a boss from Amildrasil, which is the fourth yellow name down from the top. And Gnarl Root's that first one. So he has an ID of 2820 and then click accept. Again, your boss names and your boss IDs will be relevant to the raids that you're currently looking at, but this is how you find that. So in a nutshell, this aura will only load if we're actively fighting Gnarl Root. The next recommendation that I have would be to come over to the Actions tab. This is entirely optional, but I like it for important spells. You know, like the kind of one where I'm making a standalone weak aura for. I like to add a small sound to accompany the visual. It helps build a connection in my brain between hear a sound and pay attention, like a Pavlov kind of thing, but for not dying. To accomplish this, we'll come to the Actions tab, and in the On Show section, we're going to click Play Sound. From the Sound dropdown below it, Choose whichever option that you'd like. For frontal spells, I prefer something very brief and unique that is away from in-game sounds. Personally, I like something that's slightly higher pitched, since most game sounds, especially in raid environments, are very bassy and low-toned. It helps to have a sound that stands out in the middle of combat. Personally, I like to go with the glass sound. I can go and play it here. It's high-pitched, it's short, and it usually cuts through raid sounds pretty effectively. I'll spare you all of the details of the visual styling that I did for the aura. Just know that I added the border that's black and a glow that shows this sort of pixel border around it when it shows up. I Again, I cover all of this in my more entry-level weak auras guides that I've posted elsewhere. I'll go ahead and put a card up here. But just to save on time here, let's skip all the styling and just know that it looks different than the defaults. At this point, I think we're pretty good to go and we can go ahead and test it. So as you can see, we're fighting the boss, and the frontal is going to happen in about 5 seconds. Now what we've done is we've made a reactive aura, meaning that the aura won't show until the boss already begins casting. So we're reacting to the boss cast. So as you can see, the boss has started casting Shadow Flame Cleave, and the aura now appears. Okay, cool. So it works. Big thumbs up. This is the simplest way of doing a reactive boss cast aura, and is good for when you want to see the boss casting an ability as it happens. Now that we've talked about reactive auras, let's look at the opposite. Let's look at the proactive auras. These will be useful when you want a warning before the boss casts their spell. The easiest way to get started with this is to install a boss mod add-on, which gives our weak auras some additional information to build off of. Some examples of boss mods would be ones such as bigwigs or deadly boss mods. My personal preference is bigwigs for many reasons, so that's what I'm going to be demonstrating today, but both will work. Let's make an aura that uses a boss mod as an information source. First, be sure that bigwigs or deadly boss mods is active and installed. Then we'll be ready to go ahead and start making our aura. We'll go ahead and open up the weak auras panel with slash WA again. And from here, we're going to select new aura at the top, followed by progress bar. Like before, it'll prompt you to begin entering your name on the left. Let's just call this Aranog Frontal Warning. Again, like the other aura that we made, we'll start by going to our Triggers tab. If we scroll to the top, we'll see that we only have the one trigger, named Trigger 1 Aura. In order to track an upcoming boss ability, we're going to change how we approach this. We'll change the type from Aura to Other Add-ons. A new field will appear on the right, and we're going to change its value to Boss Mod Timer. Next, we're going to check the ID field that appears, and this will be that spell ID of the ability that we want to track. I'm not going to go through the process of finding that spell ID again, but I'll timestamp where we just talked about it earlier in the video if you want to find it on Wowhead. I've gone ahead and looked up this spell ID for the Aranog Frontal on Wowhead, and it's this number here, and then I'll just go ahead and click OK. Next, we'll click the box for remaining time. This will control how long the weak aura will appear on our screen before the spell gets cast. Go ahead and set the operator to the less than or equal to sign. That's the carrot facing the right hand side. And we'll set the remaining time to four. 
and click OK. Now, four seconds before the boss starts casting the frontal, the weak aura will appear on the screen and then count down those four seconds that we set it to. You can set this to whatever you want to. Four to six seconds feels pretty good in my opinion, but please change it depending on your personal needs. Longer times means you'll want more of a notice, but shorter times means less visual clutter and noise clutter. So it's up to you. Again, I would definitely recommend altering the aura's load and the actions and the displays in order to match your liking, but I'm just going to timestamp those in the description to where we talked about them earlier in the video so that we don't have to go through that all a second time. At this point, the aura is technically good to go, so let's just go ahead and jump into an LFR group and see if it works. So as you can see on the screen right now, the frontal is going to happen in about five seconds. The aura will actually trigger when there's four seconds before the boss actually casts. You can see that the aura is here on my screen, but the boss is not casting the cleave yet. Now, if we watch the countdown of this aura, we'll let it play out here, when it hits zero, and then the boss actually does the cleave itself. That's because this is a proactive aura, meaning that the aura will show on screen before the boss actually does the cast. Okay, cool. So it worked. Big thumbs up. Everything's functional as I showed here on the screen. It might take some practice to figure out exactly when you want to use a reactive versus a proactive aura, but you'll kind of get the hang of it as you make them over time. That's all I had for you folks today, but I wanted to say a, a really deep thanks just from me to you guys who keep watching these videos. I like helping people. I like World of Warcraft. I like education. I did have to take a break for a little bit, and I'm hoping to do some more content here in The War Within. But this actually came from the comments. At the end of my videos, you know, I often say, let me know uh, if this helped you or if there's anything else you'd like to see. This video was specifically from a comment where someone was like, man, I really wish I understood how the hell boss casts work. I can do that. I know how to do these things. I don't do content creation professionally. This is very much a side project, and so I don't have all of this planned out. Meaning, if there's subjects that you folks were like, man, I wish someone could just walk me through how to do X, Y, Z thing. Any sort of this stuff, like, I am more than happy to make content for it. I'm not the fastest at it, but this came from the comments on one of my previous YouTube videos. Uh, and I'm happy to help you folks. It's what I'm here for. I hope that you all have a lovely rest of the Dragonflight expansion or the War Within or whichever expansion you happen to be watching this content for. And remember, this is a video game. Have fun and be nice to one another. All right. See you later.